Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I'm going to show you how I made these three coastal winter DIYs using supplies from the Dollar Tree. Okay, let's get started. The first one I want to make is a large sign. And so I'm going to use three of these long signs from the Dollar Tree. I only have one that is the winter one, the blue one with the snowflake but I had lots of them left over from the fall. And so I know they have pumpkins on them, but I'll just cover that part up. And what I'm looking to do is to make a vertical sign, a big sign for my entryway that's gonna go well with my snowman, coastal snowman tear tray. So I'm just gonna use one of these two pack of rulers from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna remove the stickers Basically, I'm just going to make two braces for the back of our sign and I'm just going to kind of arrange the boards the way I want them and just line them up, kind of making sure the tops and bottoms are aligned. And then I'm just going to attach them with that ruler using some um, Gorilla Glue hot glue. And it's just a simple way um, to make a really large sign using supplies from the Dollar Tree. So we're gonna flip that around and glue the other side. This is such a large sign that I had a lot of trouble keeping it all in frame, but I'll do the best I can. So I also wanna make a hanger and I'm gonna use that ruler, the thickness of that wood there, and I'm just tying some twine and using my staple gun to just staple that onto the back. And we're gonna have a great hanger for our sign. And I kind of alternated um, where the little holes were. I'm just gonna leave those kind of like little holes on a board. And these are the colors that we're gonna use. I'm gonna use white first. And this is just acrylic paint. Just gonna go over the whole thing just because they're different colors. And I wanna do a pretty blue um, effect on these. And so I kind of needed a good background. So just going over the whole thing with just some white paint. And while I'm painting white, I'm gonna go ahead and paint this little Let It Snow wood sign that I got at the Dollar Tree, white as well. And this is gonna be a part of our sign for the entryway. So just filling that hole in with a little spackle, drying it, and then I'm sanding that off. And I'm just going to use a makeup sponge to paint this, just to kind of keep the paint off the sides and kind of keep it clean. And it kind of gives like a, like a spongy, snowy effect to the paint job to kind of make it look like snow. And that looks pretty good. So now this sign is dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint the, to the top half of the sign, um, this Caribbean blue. This is an acrylic paint that I get at Target. And I use this color for a lot of my winter DIY, so I wanted to use this color at least on half of the sign. So just going over a couple times to get really good coverage, still trying to cover up like the dark boards that were underneath. And I'm gonna leave the little cutout for the snowflake, but I'm gonna cover up the two pumpkins with something when I decorate this. Now on the bottom part of the sign, I'm gonna use half Caribbean blue, half white, and it's gonna give me a nice icy blue color. This is the other shade that I've been using um, for my DIYs. This is a shade that I used for my coastal snowman tear tray that's gonna be um, in the same area at my entryway. So I'm just gonna paint the bottom half of the sign this icy blue color. And what I'm going for is kind of like an ombre effect. That way I incorporate both colors I've been decorating with. And then I mixed both colors together, right? And that's what I'm gonna kind of paint in between to kind of give me that nice fade between the different shades, the darker to the lighter. And it gives me just a very slight ombre effect. They're pretty close in color, but they're a little different. And 
And then I'm just using one of those little makeup sponges to blend. Okay, now we're gonna go to Cricut Design Space. And I kind of measured the area where I want to make a stencil. So I'm just gonna make a rectangle the size of the area I want. Of course, I have a blue sign, so I'm gonna make it blue. And then I'm gonna type what I want my hand-painted sign to say somewhere else. So I wanted to say, let it snow somewhere else, of course, because I don't want it snowing here, man. That's why I moved to Florida. <laughs> So I'm just going through trying to find a font that I like. And I really like the DTC fonts if you have Cricut Design Space. Um, this one is called DTC Cozy and I've used it before. I really like it. It's nice and fat and it does really good for like a snowy effect. So just kind of seeing how that's gonna look in white because that's what color I'm gonna paint it. Kind of making it as big as I probably can. Once I get it the way I like it, I just delete the rectangle and I'm ready to cut that out. And I cut that with um, some stencil vinyl that I get on Amazon. I can post a link below. I did have to end up using the large two foot mat because it was such a big project. And I am just weeding this with my Cricut Bright Pad. And another great thing about this font is that it's super easy to weed because it is the letters are nice and big. So that's how our stencil looks. I think stencils is like my favorite thing about using my Cricut for hand painted signs. And I'm gonna use some of this paper, um, transfer paper that I get on Amazon as well to transfer my stencil to my sign. So just making sure everything stays down and pulling off the backing paper. And we're ready to apply our custom stencil to our sign. So it's upside down, I know, but the sign is so big that I couldn't get it all fit in there. So I kind of want this to be on the bottom part of my sign. I almost get it on there um, even. <laughs> I always struggle putting those on. And I'm just gonna tape off a few areas that I think I might go over with paint. And I am not gonna use Mod Podge just because I really don't care if it, ble if it bleeds a little bit because I'm gonna distress this anyway and I'm just using one of those little makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree and going all over with that white acrylic paint and doing one coat and then I do go back in and do a second coat to make sure that I have good coverage and you're going to be able to read that hand painted sign well. And I really have enjoyed making these coastal winter DIYs, they're really fun. It involves a little bit of creativity but we can make anything beachy I think. And I am just weeding out the little parts. Some of it wanted to come up a little bit, but I'm just kind of um, pushing it down as I go, as I weed it to make sure everything is nice and flat. And just weeding out those little pieces that are left in our letters. And that part of the sign is done. Now I'm gonna use a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and some of that white acrylic paint. I'm gonna do a very light distress all over, removing any excess paint with just a baby wipe. Then to cover that little pumpkin area there at the bottom of the sign, I'm just gonna use a large seashell that I found at the beach and I am just going to attach that with hot glue. And the snowflake is perfect. I don't have to do anything with that. And then I'm gonna turn my sign around here and we are going to glue down the let it snow sign. This is a really cute sign from the Dollar Tree. I really like the design. And just um, putting hot glue on any surfaces I can get it on and just gonna stick that to the front of the sign. Whenever I'm working with Dollar Tree signs, I like to layer the thin signs, that way it gives it more of a substantial feel. Then I also have that little area at the top, there's a pumpkin and I am just gonna glue on a sand dollar and I get these on Amazon. I can post a link for those as well. These are the larger ones. And then I also decide to add another seashell to the bottom where I glued the first one. Now I kinda wanted it to have a frame. So I'm gonna use some of this white rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to glue that to the edges. It's gonna give me like a fun coastal frame, um, but really easy. I don't have to cut any wood or any framing. And I'm just going to attach that with hot glue around all four edges. This rope was not quite long enough to go around all four sides. It was long enough to go around three sides. 
So I did have to use two packages of rope on this one. So I'm just kind of gluing the side there and now we can do the top. And I also cut that to size so it would end at a corner. It's gonna give me an easier place to bring the two ropes together. And then I'm gonna open another package and take the little plastic off the tip and we can start on this side and just gluing it on. And I think that gives it a fun little coastal touch for our let it snow somewhere else sign. And it's really hard to show you the whole sign because it's so big. <laughs> I did decide I wanted a few more snowflakes though. So I'm gonna use some of these wood snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. They are ornaments, so I just had to fill in the top with a little spackling, a little hole in the top. And I'm just using one of those makeup sponges and some white acrylic paint to make these little snowflakes white. Super easy way to paint these ornaments. And then we can glue this down with some hot glue. I'm gonna do one on each side there of the sand dollar just to kind of fill out the top of the side a little bit. And I have it done. This is how it looks in my entryway. Let it snow somewhere else. I love it. It's my mantra this winter. <laughs> okay guys, next DIY. This is an old sign that I had. Um, I think I bought it last year at the craft section at Walmart and I had distressed it in an ivory. And I took the vinyl off of it from what I was using it last year and I'm just gonna kind of remake it. But I want it to be like a snowy white. So I'm going over the whole thing with that white acrylic paint. And then I am gonna use one of these wood snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. This one's kind of nice because there's plenty of room to write on it. So I'm gonna make a sign. And I'm gonna do this in that icy blue that I used on my Coastal Snowman tear tray, mixing the half Caribbean blue and half white. And it's gonna give me this really nice light shade of blue. And I'm gonna take that blue snowflake and put it on the front of that white sign that we painted. And you can use whatever you've got. But I really liked the snowflake um, design. It's gonna really kind of go with what I'm gonna do with this sign. So I'm just giving it a second coat to make sure that I have good coverage on that raw wood from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna use my white Sharpie um, paint pen and I am gonna write my saying on there. I'm gonna kinda do like a Ray Dunn font, like the long skinny letters, and just trying my best. I could have made another stencil or put some vinyl on here, but I thought I could probably pull off this saying. It's not real large. And so the saying on this sign is gonna be, sand is the new snow. So I thought that was kind of funny. And just trying to make that look the best that I can. Kind of want to make the letters a little bit fatter. Then I wanted to decorate a little bit so I'm going to use some of these wood snowflakes from the Dollar Tree and I thought like four of them on there would be really cute to decorate it a little bit more but I want them to be white as well. So using a makeup sponge and some white acrylic paint we're going to paint those little four snowflakes white and just going to hot glue those on to our larger snowflake. And we're going to attach this nice thin sign on the front of that chunky sign and it's going to give me more of a substantial sign and make it not look so cheap like a Dollar Tree sign. So we've got all four of those on there and we are ready to attach it to the front of the sign. I'm just going to glue it on with some Gorilla Glue hot glue. I'm going to use quite a bit to make sure that it stays put. And I think this turned out really cute. I did want to make a quick bow though. This is some burlap from the Dollar Tree that I cut in half before to make it skinnier for another project. And I'm just going to cut out two pieces of those and just put them in a simple X. Then this is that white lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to do a very simple X as well with it. And then this is that blue snowflake ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do that one on top. I'm just going to do a very simple X bow using a zip tie to kind of cinch these all together. And I don't think I'm really good at making bows, but there are some like these that are really easy to do. Just cinching that into the back and cutting off the excess um, zip tie. And we have a cute little X bow, just kind of trimming it up a little bit. And we're ready to attach this to our sign. I'm just gonna kind of hot glue it up in the corner of the sign 
And then I wanna cover the zip tie with something so you can't see that. So I'm gonna use a little sand dollar. I also get these on Amazon and they're a little bit smaller and super cute. So I'm just going to attach that to the front of the bow with some hot glue. And this DIY is done and this is how it looks hanging in my entryway. I love it, I love that saying. Okay, our next DIY is going to be a snowman. So I'm gonna use one of these Tensely Snowman from the Dollar Tree. And it has little hooks keeping the three rings together. I'm gonna leave those on there, but just detaching the parts and then cutting all of the little tinsel off and the little plastic buttons until we have the three cages for our snowman so we can give this a coastal touch. I really hope you're enjoying these DIYs today. If you are, please take a moment to like this video. And after you watch it, I would really appreciate if you could comment below. And if you haven't subscribed, we would love to have you here with Crafty Beach. I post lots of videos with fun DIYs. And this is the rope that we're gonna use for this one. It is the six foot white rope, but you can use whatever you've got. And I'm going to make a little rope snowman here with those pieces of that cage. So I'm gonna start with the bigger one, the bottom piece of the snowman, and I am just going to glue that down in the middle, and then we can just kind of go around in circles with the rope, and whenever there is a cage to glue it to, I do put down a little bit of hot glue just to keep it down. A lot of that part was kind of like open space but if you keep your tension in there and keep it pretty tight, it stays pretty good in its shape. And pretty much I'm gonna use the entire six foot on this one. It's not quite long enough, but it's pretty close. So just going around and around. When I do run out of rope, there's a few little tabs that you can still see on the outside. And so I just go around with my um, scissors and cut off the little tabs that you can see but I'm trying to leave like my hooks and everything on there so that I can reattach my snowman when I'm done. And I like to cut the end a little bit of an angle. I find it tapers it a little bit when you go to um, glue that down. And here I am just cutting off the little tabs that you could still see, there was a few. And then I'm gonna go in and do the same thing here with the middle piece of the body. So I love this technique. I did this on like a spider for Halloween. It turned out really cool. It kind of looked like a mummy spider, but I really like um, the, the simplicity of the rope, like in circles like this. I also wanted to take the opportunity to let you know that I just made a new Facebook group. It's called Crafty Beach, and it is a great place for us to all share our latest DIYs and it, I just started it and it's really fun. We would love to have you. So I will post a link below for how you can join the Facebook group and hopefully you can come join us over on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram and so I can post a link for that as well. And I would love to have you over there as well. So here is the little face of our snowman. Basically, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna have to like kind of have a circle um, even though the top part of that face is under the hat, but I'm gonna kinda do the same thing and have my hat lay on top of the top part of the snowman head. So I need about that much rope to go all the way around. And I'm gonna have like the end seam up underneath the hat where I can hide it a little bit. And then I'm gonna use one of these blue baby blankets from the Dollar Tree. I love the shade of blue and it's this nice thick felt. And I used this for the hat for my snowman reef that I made for my front door, my coastal snowman reef. And I loved it. So I had this left over and I'm just gonna double it up so that you can't quite see through it. I don't wanna want see the cage underneath and just gluing that on to the hat portion of the snowman. And then I just also want to make a brim for the hat there's a little hat sticking out on each side there. So I'm just gonna cut a thin strip and double that up. Just trying to make sure that I have that cut relatively straight. One side has a seam, so that's easy. The other side, I just need to kind of cut. And I'm just gonna glue that on there and that's gonna be the rest of the hat. 
First, I'm gonna glue it together. And since it is like kind of a rounded face, I do kind of glue it up a little bit in the middle and then a little down more on the sides. And our little snowman has a hat. And I think that turned out really cute. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do a face on this or leave it more abstract, but one of my viewers, Sandy, posted her wooden snowman on our Facebook group and she inspired me to use shells on my snowman. So I do have some little tiny shells that I got at the Dollar Tree in a little bottle. And I'm gonna get two that are about the same for the nose. And then I'm gonna use like a larger cone shaped shell for the nose. It kind of looks like a carrot and I'm gonna glue that sticking out. And then I'm gonna glue five of the little tiny shells for a little snowman smile. And I love this idea, Sandy. I think it's so cute. Thank you for the inspiration. And then I'm gonna find five um, little shells that are all about the same size and the same colors. And we're gonna use those for the buttons on the front of the snowman. Kind of like what he had on there before. Two on the small part and three on the large part. Just attaching all the shells with hot glue. My favorite is that carrot nose made out of a seashell. I love it. Now these have little hoops that you can put on there and then close to hook the snowman back together. And that's what we're doing here. This is my favorite DIY. I think he turned out so cute. And I'm just gonna replace the hanger with a little bit of twine. The first one was a little too thick, so I'm using some of that thin twine from the Dollar Tree. But then I thought maybe he needs a scarf. And so I'm just gonna cut out just a strip of that baby blanket from the Dollar Tree. And I've been looking for more in the solid blue and all I can find are patterns. But I did pick up some patterns for Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day, so that's there's that. And then I'm just gonna simply wrap that around where his neck would be like a little scarf. And I think that turned out really cute. Then I was trying to decide if I was gonna give him arms and I decide yes, he needs arms. So I'm going to use some of this wired jute from the Dollar Tree and cut off two long pieces for the arms and two short pieces for the hands. I'm just going to simply wrap that around real quick, trying not to mess with it too much because this stuff likes to fray really bad. And I am just going to use hot glue to attach um, the arms on the underside of the middle part of our snowman there and give him some fun little arms. And that's the last step in our little snowman DIY. I love him. I can't stop looking at him. He's so cute. And this is how he looks in my entryway. Okay, guys, are you ready for the final reveal? It's time. Thank you for watching, everyone. Here we go. You, you've been hiding in the shadows way too long. Always thought that you were weak, but babe, you're wrong Yeah, you better step into the light Just give it a try Think that it's time you let that spark out You've been hiding in the shadows way too long Cause you're a work of art